Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. A multi-speciality hospital, a high-tech diamond factory, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates a series of projects on the second day of his visit to Gujarat. Nepal President Vidya Devi Bandari arrives in Delhi for a five-day goodwill visit, talks with high-level delegation to focus on deepening development partnership between the two countries. Delhi's crime branch files an FIR against TTV Dinakaran of the AIDMK, the Deputy General Secretary of the party Sasikala faction, charged with allegedly trying to bribe an election commission official for the party symbol. And celebrations and protests greet President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's election win in Turkey. 51% of the electorate vote in favour of his push for an executive presidency. Our top story coming in from Gujarat, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a slew of projects in Surat and Dadra and Nagar Haveli today. He arrived in Surat to a rousing welcome on Sunday and the visit assumed significance as assembly elections in the state is slated for this year and the BJP could witness a fight from the Partidar community seeking reservation. Visit to Gujarat on Monday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a charitable hospital in Surat. The 400 crore rupee multi super speciality hospital and research center is built by a not for profit body, the Samast Partidar Arogya Trust. The Prime Minister indicated that the government may bring in a legal framework under which doctors will have to prescribe generic medicines that are cheaper than branded drugs to patients. पंद्रह साल के बाद इस सरकार ने हेल्थ पॉलिसी लाई है लेकिन गरीब के लिए मध्यम वर्ग के लिए आरोग्य सेवाएं सुचारू रूप से उपलब्ध हो उस दिशा में सरकार एक के बाद एक कदम उठा रही है हम कानून और व्यवस्था करने वाले हैं डॉक्टर पर्ची लिखेंगे तो उसमें लिखेंगे कि जनरिक दवा खरीदने के लिए उसके लिए काफी है और दवा खरीदने की जरूरत नहीं है Modi also inaugurated a fully automatic cattle feed plant and an ice cream plant of Sumul Dairy at Bajipura village in Tapi district. Later, in neighboring Silvasa, the Prime Minister inaugurated a slew of government projects including Passport Seva Kendra and the Jan Oshadhi Kendras. <laughs> जब आजादी के 75 साल होंगे हमारे देश का एक भी गरीब ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए जिसके पास रहने के लिए अपना खुद का घर न हो Narendra Modi arrived in Surat on Sunday to a rousing reception leading an 11 kilometer road show from the airport to the circuit house this is the Prime Minister's second visit to Gujarat and the first to the Patidar community stronghold Surat after he assumed office in 2014. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in other news, hours after the Delhi crime branch registered a case against TTV Dinakaran for allegedly trying to bribe the election commission, he has denied the charges, calling it a political conspiracy. A special team comprising students of the interstate cell of crime branch has been formed to probe the high-profile case. Delhi's crime branch filed an FIR against TTV Dinakaran, the Deputy General Secretary of the AIDMK Sasikala faction. The police charged Dinakaran with allegedly trying to bribe an election commission official. Dinakaran has claimed that efforts were being made to destroy his organisation politically. The police action comes after the arrest of an alleged middleman, Sukesh Chandrasekhar, from a five-star hotel in Delhi on Sunday. How does a broker or somebody say that it is money from TTV Dinagaran 
the person whom I had seen, no, only just now I saw him in the TV channel, some English channel, his photograph, he is arrested like. If there is any summon from the police, Delhi police, I will uh, legally face it. What is there? I will answer them. And I don't know anybody by this name. I didn't uh, ever come in my life in that name, Suket Chandrasekhar. And I didn't bribe for uh, anyway. I bribed to anybody for anything. The alleged bribe was offered in an attempt to get AIATMK's poll symbol of two leaves in a by-election to the RK Nagar Assembly seat in Tamil Nadu. Sasikala's faction adopted the hat symbol after the election commission froze the two-leaf symbol, acknowledging the split in the party. The O Panir Selvam camp was given the electric pole symbol. Today we have filed thousands of affidavits which were given by the supporters of Mr. O Panir Selvam, who is the head of the true ADMK before the election commission in order to establish that we are the true ADMK and we are entitled for the two-leaf symbol. And we have also sought time for filing lakhs of affidavits before the election commission by the office bearers and the primary members of the AADMK party. At least 1.3 crore rupees was recovered from Chandrasekhar that police claim he was planning to use to bribe EC officials. Around 50 crore rupees were paid as bribe. An FIR was filed under Section 8 of the Prevention of Corruption Act that pertains to taking gratification by corrupt or illegal means to influence public servants. Dinakaran will be served notice to join the investigation. It shows their desperation in capturing the party and power. See, whenever a leader is no more, the party without a second-rank leader is bound to split because both the sides are being power mongers. They want to capture both the power and the party. That is what is going on now. Uh, this, but this is a very shameful thing that uh, uh, this has gone to this extent of bribing the election commission. These people are mafia people. These people are criminals indulging in uh, bad activities where Tamil Nadu people does, don't like them at all. That's why I'm insisting again and again uh, requesting Honorable Prime Minister to invoke 356 at Tamil Nadu because every minister there, even the chief minister involved in corruption and involved in all illegal activities. Meanwhile, the Opanir Selvam led AIDMK faction on Monday rejected Dinakaran's call to return to the parent party. The rebel camp, however, refused to accept his leadership. The EC cancelled the bipole to the RK Nagar Assembly seat, which was scheduled for the 12th of April, saying that the electoral process had been corrupted through the use of money power. The bipole had become necessary owing to the death of the then Chief Minister J. Jalalitha last December. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Now to UP, where Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has hit out at politicians, staying silent on the issue of triple talaq. Comparing their silence to the disrobing of Draupadi in Mahabharat, Yogi Adityanath said that by keeping mum, politicians are as culpable as those practicing it. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister made these comments at an event to mark the 91st birth anniversary of former Prime Minister Chandrasekhar. Batting for the uniform civil code in the country, Adityanath called for putting an end to triple talaq among the Muslim community. Yogi's remarks come a day after Prime Minister Modi made a strong pitch against triple talaq. He said that the exploitation of Muslim women should end and justice should be done to them. मुझे याद आता है जब आज लोग देश की एक ज्वलंत समस्या को लेकर के मुंह बंद किए हुए हैं तो मुझे महाभारत की वो सभा याद आती है जब द्रौपदी का चीर हरण हो रहा होता होता है और उस समय द्रौपदी ने उस भरी सभा से एक प्रश्न पूछा था कि आखिर इस घटना का दोषी कौन है हिंदुओं के बिलीफ के लिहाज से जो भी उसमें हुआ वो उनका कीदा है ये ट्रिपल डाइवोर्स कतई ऐसा उसको उससे कंपेयर नहीं कर सकते आप इसलिए ये एक रिलीजियस राइट है जो इसका मिसयूज होता है और कानून अपने यहां पे है वनस्पत के इसे हम राजनीतिक मुद्दा बना है इसे सोशल मुद्दा बना करके और सोशल सोशली और उसमें भी मुस्लिम समाज आगे आए इस वो गोलमोल बातें नहीं करके एक सीधी लाइन दें ये सब लोगों की मंशा है लेकिन कोर्ट के विचाराधीन है और कोर्ट पर छोड़ देना चाहिए पीपल लाइक 
Aditya Nadji, now the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, by bringing up this issue, in fact, and linking it with the Uniform Civil Code, he is undermining or he is showing up the double speak of the Bhatia Janta Party. Protesters clash with police in Srinagar amid a spike in violence after the army allegedly tied a man to the front of a jeep as a human shield. The Jammu and Kashmir police filed an FIR against the army for the same. Broadband and mobile internet services have been suspended in Kashmir Valley indefinitely after college students protesting the use of force against their friends in Pulwama district pelted stones at security personnel. The forces in turn fired tear gas shells at the protesters. The developments come after this video of the incident went viral last week, drawing widespread condemnation. Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti had sought a detailed report from the state police. The army too conducted an investigation into the incident. Meanwhile, all schools in Jammu and Kashmir's Naushera sector have been closed for the time being amidst the ongoing ceasefire violation by Pakistan. The Pakistani army earlier in the day initiated discriminate firing of uh, indiscriminate firing, I'm sorry, of small arms, automatics and mortars along the line of control. The Indian Army posts also retaliated to the fire. Central government as well as state government, they are doing uh, their best to control the situation and we shall be able to do it. Uh, our police is uh, brave police, our security forces are brave people and we shall Protest is about the Taki Jomar Bai Shahid Horanjo, Hambezuma Zatia Dare, Hamuske Mazamas Gardi, Protest Sike Klaf. Vice President Mohammed Havid Ansari today underscored the need to raise the budget allocation for the education sector, especially primary education. Interacting with students of the Sharda University in Greater Noida, Ansari said that India needs to lay emphasis on research to improve its global ranking. Pointing out that India's allocation for the education sector is lower than many other nations, Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari said both the center and states are shifting blame on each other. Allocation, both at the central government level and at the state level, to education is abysmally low and is not targeted to achieving higher quantitative and qualitative results. It is unfortunate, but our public opinion is not willing to address this problem. The vice president emphasized the need to encourage research in the country. He also said India needs to recognize talent. My thinking is that we made one fundamental mistake. We separated research from teaching. You see, the two are not separable. The vice president strongly advocated linking education with technology and skill development to keep pace with the changing times. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. China has reiterated that Dalai Lama's recent visit to Arunachal Pradesh has negatively impacted India-China ties. In a statement, the foreign uh, Chinese ministry, uh, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson Liu Kang said, and I quote, in the past, due to some reasons we all know, the political foundation of China and India relations were undermined. This had a negative impact for the bilateral relations and also the boundary question negotiations. He also added that we urge the Indian side to observe its commitment on Tibet-related issues and implement our consensus. Namely, they should not use Dalai Lama to undermine the interests of China. Only in this way can we create a good atmosphere to the settlement of the boundary question, unquote. Now, Lu's comments were in response to a statement on Friday from the External Affairs Ministry that there was no change in New Delhi's position on Tibet being a part of China. But China did lodge a diplomatic protest with uh, India when the Dalai Lama visited Arunachal Pradesh this month. Wholesale price inflation eased to 5.7% in March on the back of softening prices of fuel and manufactured items. WPI inflation stood at 6.55% in February, but it was in the negative zone at minus 0.45% in March 2016. Fuel inflation declined to 18.16% from 21.02% in February. Manufactured items also witnessed a fall in prices, with inflation being recorded at 2.99% in March against 3.66% in the previous month. Food inflation, however, inched up 3.12% in March from 2.69% in February on festival demand. 
And now it's only mid-April and temperatures continue to soar well into the 40s across the country. Part of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are facing a heat wave with the mercury hovering above 40 degrees. The Med Department said that the maximum temperature is likely to be above normal by 2 to 4 degrees and above 42 degrees in isolated places in North Telangana. A heat wave alert was also sounded for central Maharashtra and Marathwada regions where the mercury remains above 40. In Rajasthan too, severe heat wave conditions have disrupted normal life. Sri Ganganagar was the hottest place in the state with a maximum temperature of 46 degrees. Unrelenting heat wave continuing to grip the north as well. Most parts of Haryana, Punjab, UP and Delhi are reeling under heat wave conditions. But there could be some relief in sight as the western disturbance is likely to hit the hills by the 21st of April, which perhaps means rains. Meanwhile, in the east, the Med Department has warned of thunderstorm in Bihar, West Bengal, Assam and Meghalaya. It also may rain in parts of Odisha due to cyclonic storm Marutha. And here's also a look at what else is making news across the country in Nationwide. The Supreme Court on Monday ordered the auction of Sahara Group's Ambi Valley property worth about 39,000 crore rupees in Lonabla in Maharashtra. The court directed Subrato Roy, Sahara's chief, out on parole to also be present in court on the 27th of April, the next date of hearing. The Ambi Valley auction is to ensure the recovery of about 14,000 crore rupees that the group owes to investors who were duped. The Enforcement Directorate has issued a show cause notice to Karthi Chidambaram and others for alleged forex violations on the tune uh, to the tune of 45, uh, 45 crore rupees. Uh, the agency has also issued a notice to the Chennai-based pharma firm for FEMA contraventions to the tune of 2,262 crore rupees. Former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram's son, Karthi Chidambaram, was a director in the company. The Supreme Court took strong note today of huge vacancies in police force in six states. It has asked the Home Secretaries of Bihar, UP, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal to appear personally or depute an officer to assist it. The six states have also been asked to provide a roadmap as to how they plan to fill up the vacancies. It needs to be submitted in the Apex Court by Friday. P.K. Kunyali Kutti of the Congress-led UDF today won the Malapuram Bipol in Kerala by more than 1.7 lakh votes. CPIM's M.B. Faisal was the first runner-up, while the BJP's candidate and Sri Prakash was a distant third. The Bipol, which took place on the 12th of April, was necessitated following the demise of former Union Minister E.M. The Delhi government has requested the Supreme Court on Monday to set up a constitution bench at the earliest to decide on the administrative head of the National Capital Territory. The top court had last month referred to a constitution bench a batch of pleas filed by the Ahmadmi Party government against the High Court verdict which had held that Delhi is not a state and that the Lieutenant Governor is its administrative head. With that, a quick break here. Up next, more nationally international news. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. Now, Indian leaders will have a series of talks with Nepal's President Vidya Devi Bandari on Monday. And of course, the following days as well, the discussions will focus on political and business and social issues related to the Madhesis of Nepal. India is attaching a lot of importance to this five-day presidential visit of Bandari. Nepal's President Vidya Devi Bandari arrived in Delhi on Monday for a five-day goodwill visit to India. 
She is accompanied by a high-level delegation from Nepal that includes ministers, members of parliament and senior officials. Pandari is in India at the invitation of President Pranab Mukherjee for what is her first visit abroad after becoming president. The main focus of her visit will be to broaden development partnership between the two countries, including deepening the cooperation in the power sector. Now, I would like to really look ahead in terms of India-Nepal cooperation on the power sector. And as I alluded to you, uh, it's a, it is really witnessing a new beginning, if I may say so. And as I mentioned to you, it is not a small thing uh, for us to uh, uh, invest and approve, upfront invest uh, about 6,000 crores uh, worth of investment in a project in Nepal. This uh, agreement was signed in 2014. Uh. Among her meetings with Indian leaders, Bandhari will call on President Pranam Mukherjee, Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj on Tuesday. Her talks will feature issues of terrorism and connectivity between the two countries. The government of Nepal had proposed 16 road projects and bridges of amount uh, of approximately 300 million US dollar under the line of credit of US dollar 550 million, which we have agreed to and we look forward to their implementations in the, in the coming months. It is in this context of intensified engagement with Nepal that the state visit of President of Nepal is taking place. Bandari will also visit places of religious importance in Gujarat and Odisha. Her trip comes at a time when China is wooing Nepal with goods and aid, while India is focused on deepening its development partnership, cultural and people-to-people -people contacts. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Now to Turkey, where President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's push for an executive presidency succeeded with just over 51% voting for it. The win was met with both celebrations and protests across Turkey. Here are more details. It's the dawn of a new political system in Turkey as its parliamentary democracy gets replaced with an executive presidency with the Yes campaign winning with a narrow majority of 51.3%. The historic referendum victory now hands President Recep Tayyip Erdogan sweeping new powers. Bugün yapılan anayasa değişikliği halk oylamasının sonuçlarının ülkemiz ve milletimiz için hayırlı olmasını diliyorum. Milletimiz bir kez daha gerçekten çok çok müstesna. Accepting the people's mandate, the Turkish Prime Minister too joined in the celebrations, saying the referendum's results have opened a new page in democratic history. Democracy tarihimizde bu oylamayla yeni bir sayfa açılmıştır. Herkes emin olsun ki. But protests were held in many places across Turkey against the referendum result. Opposition parties have questioned the legitimacy of the referendum criticizing the High Electoral Board for making the vote controversial. Turkey's High Electoral Board had said that it would count ballots which had not been stamped by its officials as valid unless they could be proved fraudulent. Turkish residents too are questioning the results of the referendum. Three of Turkey's biggest cities, Istanbul, Ankara and Izmir, all voted no to the constitutional changes. Referendum sonucundan ortaya çıkan sayısal sonuç yüzde elli yüzde elli yani yarı yarıya ve bu şu demektir yani toplumu çok geneli bu referandumu kabul etmedi çok açıktır. Turkey will not turn to the new presidential system until 2019 when Erdogan's current term ends and fresh parliamentary elections will be held concurrently. Turkey has followed the parliamentary system since the Republic of Turkey was founded in 1923. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence warned North Korea that neither the United States nor South Korea will tolerate further missile and nuclear tests. Pence used a visit to the heavily militarized border separating North and South Korea to reiterate Washington's position in dealing with Pyongyang. He added that all options are on the table to deal with the threat posed by Pyongyang. He also described North Korea as the region's most dangerous and urgent threat to peace and security. Pence visited the zone a day after North Korea made a failed missile launch. 
Over the past 18 months, North Korea has conducted two unlawful nuclear tests and an unprecedented number of ballistic missile tests, even conducting a failed missile launch as I traveled here for this visit. The era of strategic patience is over. And now let's get you some more updates from across the world in Global Buzz. South Korea's ousted President Park Yun-hai was on Monday charged with bribery involving millions of dollars over the corruption scandal that sparked her downfall. Park, whose impeachment was confirmed by Seoul's top court last month, also faces charges of, abu of abusing her powers and leaking state secrets. The death toll in a bomb attack on a crowded bus convoy outside Aleppo in Syria has reached 126. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, 68 children were among those killed. The blast hit a convoy carrying people, including civilians and several hundred pro-government fighters who were granted safe passage out of the two Shiite villages which are besieged by rebels. U.S. National Security Advisor Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster on Monday said that Pakistan should use diplomacy and not proxies that engage in violence to pursue its interests in Afghanistan and elsewhere. The U.S. NSA further criticized the Pakistani leadership for selectively targeting terror groups. McMaster, in an interview to Afghan television channel, appeared to take a tougher line on Pakistan, which has been accused of using the Taliban as a proxy force and giving its leaders sanction. China's economy posted a forecast-beating growth rate in the first quarter of 2017, with the GDP rising to 6.9%. The growth was well above the full-year target of 6.5% and the 6.8% increase registered in the fourth quarter of 2016. The GDP reached 2.63 trillion US dollars in the first quarter. The death toll in the collapse of an open garbage dump in Colombo rose to 29 as rescuers pulled out more bodies from the rubble today. According to the Disaster Management Centre, at least 625 people had been displaced so far. Around 1,000 security personnel were deployed for rescue operations. The massive garbage caught fire and collapsed on dozens of homes as the residents celebrated the traditional New Year on the 14th of April. And in some sports news, the Supreme Court on Monday said that the former BCCI president N. Srinivasan cannot represent the board at the ICC meeting to be held on the 24th of April. The court also added that BCCI CEO Rahul Jori can accompany Chaudhary for the meeting. The Apex Court said that it is following BCCI acting secretary Amitabh Chaudhary to represent the board at the meeting. Explaining its verdict, a bench headed by Justice Deepak Mishra slated, stated in fact, I'm sorry, that since Srinivasan was held guilty for conflict of interest, he cannot be allowed to represent the BCCI in the ICC meeting. On the 10th of April, the Apex Court had said that a person who is ineligible to become an office bearer in the BCCI and state cricket associations cannot be nominated to take part in the ICC meetings. That's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.